another fight week for you. Uh, you know, you're, you're facing a fellow member of the ESPN top 25 under 25 list. Uh, when Macy Barber's name popped up on the other side of that contract, you know, what were your emotions and how excited were you that it was him? Oh, this is exactly the fight that I wanted. Uh, right before my last fight, my coach was talking to me. He's like, oh, who should we call out? Who should we look at? And we looked at the list. And I was like, why not Macy Barber? And he was like, let's hold off on that one. And then two days later, he confirmed the fight for me. So uh, this is exactly the fight I wanted. So I'm, I've never been more excited for a fight. Were you surprised at all that they offered you, Macy, just because you both are up-and-comers that have a lot of hype behind you. You are surging right now. Were you surprised that she was the one? Uh, yes and no. I feel like, uh, like you said, we're both up-and-comers, so it's a big opportunity for both of us. But uh, I feel like she needs to be tested, and I'm really that first test she's had in the UFC. They just came out of the list. Uh, top fighters under 20, uh, 25 years old. You were on that list. <laughs> Macy was higher. Do you think it was wrong that she was higher than you? <laughs> Uh, I've been asked that before, and yes, uh, I definitely feel like um, know, she gets a lot of publicity off the way she talks. She uh, puts herself out there a little bit more than I do, but I feel like my uh, fighting skills speak for me more than uh, uh, hers do. She hasn't really been tested by tough opponents. This is my fifth fight in the UFC. It's her second and, or third, and um, I really feel like this is the first time she's going to get tested. You just said it. Uh, she has been tested. You believe you have. Similar questions. She's had ranking you on the UFC rankings. I mean... Uh, I don't really know how it all works, but uh, like I said, I think her mouth gets her a lot of places. I feel like she talks herself out there, which I'm not saying is a bad thing, good for her. Like She's getting her name up there, but I don't think I feel like I deserve that spot. You're known for your submission skills on the ground. She's known for her ground and pound. She feels very comfortable if it goes to that area. She's going to win. What do you have to say about that? Uh, um... Like I said, I feel like she hasn't been tested. Uh, she's fought two grapplers who were blue belts, and I feel like those are the girls that she's comparing me to that she was able to ground and pound with. Uh, the last two girls she fought were, or the last three girls she's fought were all strikers. So um, compared to their ground game, it's just going to be a different world. Like she's never felt pressure like mine. She's never felt uh, a submission attack game like mine, and I've got ground and pound too. So I'm lethal from anywhere. So when she was up here, she was here for 10 minutes. A lot of the questions were about John Jones' record. A lot of the questions was about Paige Van Zandt. Not a lot of questions about you. Do you think she's overlooking me? I 100% think she's overlooking me. Uh, all I've heard about is Paige Van Zandt this camp. I'm like, talk shit about the person you got a contract with, not some random girl that doesn't mean anything right now. Like, Paige is just making her comeback, and you got an important fight up in front of you on Friday, so focus on that. She obviously gets a lot of attention for the way she talks. Do you ever think to yourself as an up-and-coming fighter, like, maybe I should just throw some shit out there as well? Uh, yeah, but I guess it's not really me. I'm more of a, a little bit shy, socially awkward, kind of reserved person. Uh, I spend a lot of time at the dog park, and that's about it. So I'm not one to like, go out there and start something. Uh, but I don't. I, like I said, I feel like my fighting skills talk for me. And saying that though, you're, you always post on social media, and I see you do a lot of media as well. Is that just to overcome that, to get more comfortable with the whole media side of things? I feel like that's the only way to get better at it, is to yeah. keep on doing it. When I was uh, younger, I first worked at the Humane Society. That was my first job, and all I did was volunteer with animals, and I forced myself to get a job at Chili's because I wanted to get better at talking to people. Okay. I just wanted, I knew that it would be part of my job, and I needed to get better at it. So that's, I just try my hardest to get better at it. Okay. I think anyone who's worked in the service industry knows that people are generally terrible. <laughs> What was your worst experience working at Chili's? Uh, there's a lot of bad ones. <laughs> I always say, my no matter what, like I've left the gym crying this camp some days, and those days are better than any day I had to clock in a chili. So I'm just happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> You mentioned that before this fight was booked, you spoke to your coach who you should call out or ask. You said Macy. He said hold off. Why do you say hold off? Was I'm not really sure his reasoning behind it, but literally uh, two days after my Sarah Frota fight, he texted me. He was like, Macy Barber, October 18th. And I was like, is it confirmed? And uh, he was like, well, if you want it. And I was like, of course. And he was like, good, because I already said yeah. <laughs> you mentioned that she is uh, a star because she talks and all this and a lot of attention. Are you, you looking at this, your moment to kind of steal that attention and become one of the stars in, in the UFC's women? In, in, women's divisions? I definitely feel like this is a breakthrough fight fight for me. I, like I said, I feel like she talks a lot, she's got the tension around her, and this is the time to derail that hype train. Uh, also, the, your division is wide open. There really isn't a, a challenger right now that's kind of ahead of the pack. Do you think that with an impressive win, ESPN, that 
you could be next in line for Tony Shaw? I think that's a little bit much. <laughs> I don't think uh, they're going to push me that far ahead, but uh, maybe two, three more fights, and then the title shot would be uh, in my future, I see. And we've talked all about you know her talking about all these other things, uh, except for you. Do you take that personally? Does that annoy you that she's like you know not talking about this fight and talking more about future plans? Uh, not really. I, mean, I guess I look at it and just kind of laugh um, that she's overlooking me. She doesn't really see my style as threatening, I guess, which is kind of silly since I have six finishes out of my seven wins yeah. but um I get it. My style doesn't look intimidating. People are like, I just have to defend the takedown. And then they get in there and realize it's not that easy and they're drowning on the ground and they can't do anything. <sighs> have you seen her this week at all? Like in the hotel? Uh, just one time when she was walking and out of the room. Tell me that experience. Was it cool? How, how did it? Uh, uh, it was just awkward eye contact. That was it. <laughs> when uh, you say she's overlooking you and she could well be, does that give you more confidence? You're like, oh, she has no idea what she's about to get in there. Does that give you a sense of confidence? A little bit, but also I don't necessarily know what's going through her mind. She could not be overlooking me, so I got to go in there just like she's prepared 10 weeks for just my fight and got to really look into it. You know, she's a threat no matter what. She's 7 0 for a reason. One of the things that I think a lot of people notice about you, we have a lot of fighters say, oh, this is the best camp I had. I made so many improvements, and they go out there and look the same. But with you, it seems like your rate of improvement shows every single fight. And you're always matched up in these close fights in the odds. Do you feel like history is just going to repeat itself in that category? A hundred percent. I always feel like I'm the underdog. But uh, like I said, I feel like my style is not intimidating. It's easy to overlook. And uh, I'll show everybody who the Savage is on Friday. <laughs> How's Boston so far? Just last question I was going to ask. How's, how's it been uh, being out here? Uh, I haven't really done too much <laughs> yet. Uh, just a lot of weight cut and um, I, don't know, I don't leave my hotel room a lot. I'm so focused mentally on this fight and it's really just all I want. What are you doing in the room watching Netflix? What, what's uh, uh, keeping yourself occupied? A little <laughs> bit of movies, a little bit of uh, visualization, meditation, reading, all of that. I always stay focused on the fight. You mentioned that she gets most of the eyeballs, you don't get as many. This is a big moment for you. Uh, a lot of casual fans don't know you. What are they going to say about you after the after the event? I feel like I'm just going to really impress Boston. I'm really going to show the world who I am. They're going to uh, see my submission skills, see my uh, all my uh, ground and pound, and uh, I'm just going to put on a show, put on a performance, and uh, really make it a clinic. Has it been different at American Top Team with Kobe Covington, Joanna, Dustin, Jorge Masvidal, the feud at all? Has the dynamics changed a little bit? I'm the socially awkward, socially awkward one in the back. I don't really. I, I work with Dean, and then I go home and hang out with my dog, and that's about it. Yeah. <laughs>